We're just talking about shop teachers in here. Every shop teacher I ever had and Fafa Fui ever had and all the guys in here ever had, all were missing digits. Really? Yeah, they were yeah. always missing a chunk of their finger. Yeah, well, that was a good ad. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And, they, and then they would tell you to go work the lathe. You never had to take shop, right? No. I assume, because girls, girls didn't I, have I to take I went to an old girls school, number one. We didn't have a shop. Yeah. I don't know why guys only have to take shop, because shop is the most sadistic class in your school. Uh, I had a shop teacher that used to, I mean, it was bad enough I was in Roosevelt that it was an all-black school, and the, the black kids were hostile to me. And I don't know well, that. I guess they did have that in junior high school, too. Yeah. But yeah. But this guy used to stand there and throw erasers at us. <laughs> like big giant erasers and just chuck them at our heads. Well, for what reason? Because to, 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 to so, well, yeah, well, the kids were really out of control. I had kids in my shop class. I mean, when I was in ninth grade, these guys were 18, 19 years old. <laughs> I, I'm being they serious. They should have been working. Yeah, they should have been These guys with full facial hair and, you know, full full, full genitals. They should have had jobs. Yeah, and they would pull their pants down in the middle of class and, and fondle their genitals. Well, I mean, you do that here. So. Yeah, well, but this is my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In high school, I didn't take shop classes, but the shop teacher in our high school was, like, notorious. He called black guys spear chuckers. Really? To their faces in front of the other class. He wouldn't have done that in Roosevelt. Oh, man. Well, yeah, he was on a practically all-white school. With yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. He it was wasn't? Just, really? And everybody loved him, including them, but he was out of control. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody loved, loved him. him. They did. Yeah. The black kids loved him. But Jackie right. again, right on target. Like that. How that many, was he missing a finger? Mine was missing no, a finger. No, he was missing his arms. They got him. Uh, no, really, seriously, was yours missing a finger? Well, he wasn't missing a finger, but he had a thing where he had cut... Um, his middle finger on the table saw, and it had grown back in a weird way, so he could stick a quarter in it and put his hand upside down to check it around, and the quarter wouldn't fall out. Oh, yeah. he had a groove in his. He had a groove hand. in his finger. Oh, yeah, and then in grammar school, I had half a pinky. I was always shocked that they want you working a lathe and stuff. I mean, you know, you can really lose fingers and hands and stuff. But you, you know, you're absolutely right. Shop class was dangerous, and you know why? Because, because it was a big, spread out room, and, it was and the machinery made it hard to, for the teacher to hear. Like if you're getting your ass kicked in the back, you know, there's a table saw yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't like a real class where you sat at a desk. You actually moved right. around. So as soon as you're moving around, kids think they can just beat everyone up. Because <laughs> I used to. I that's. I got choked in Roosevelt. There was this big black guy named Irvin. Mm -hmm. Not Irving, Irvin. Yeah. I R V. Well, that's Magic Johnson's name is Irvin. Yeah. I had never <laughs> heard that name in my life, and this guy's name was Irvin. <laughs> Irvin. <laughs> and, and I can't imagine that there's like two guys with that name. <laughs> Irvin. Irvin. What? Irvin. Yeah, it was E R V I N, no, actually. E A. E A R. Yeah. yeah. Irvin. Irvin. And this guy, Irvin, used to beat me up all the time in Roosevelt. He was constantly, he used to beat up me and a guy named Carlos. I remember it. And Carlos was white, even though he had a Spanish name. Uh -huh. And I didn't know he beat up Carlos. I only found out after I, I had my mom report Irvin to the dean of boys. We're and then Irvin came and, sa and said, you reported me. He had to figure out if it was me or Carlos right. who had reported him. Right. So he shook us down because he shook us down for money every day. And uh, I hope he's in jail now. But wow. he took me. Because he could come after Yeah, you right. Can. And... <laughs> Yeah, and this guy Irvin was about six three. Uh huh. How he tall had were you full, then? I was were... probably about uh, ninth grade. I was probably about five seven. I don't know. You know, I was I wasn't that big. You weren't uh, tall yet. Yeah, it was not the tall gawky Howard Stern you know today in love. <laughs> so this guy comes and he says uh, he had to figure out which one of us. Now it was my mom who reported him <laughs> because I said to my mother, I can't He's take. Still it. sitting there trying to figure it out. This was so he took me. He grabbed me from behind and started choking me. This is the guy. Yeah. And he starts choking me and he goes, okay, in about a minute, you going to pass out from lack of oxygen. And you better tell me. So you tell me, man, <laughs> did you report me to Mr. Heck? So I, oxygen, so I was just so like, yeah, he wasn't even like, you know, you, you going to be dead. He would just say, you going to be dead. <laughs> so he, he started choking. Yeah. Reason why. yeah. So he started, yeah, he was explaining science. Well, I was learning science in the class. So anyway, he starts squeezing my neck and like right around by the Adam's apple stuff. He's just squeezing it. Oh. And I'm, I'm going, <laughs> and I'm trying to like, just, you know, your reaction is to grab from behind, but. That doesn't do a thing. Doesn't matter. I'm blacking out. I'm starting to black out. I'm losing consciousness. And he goes, did you? I'm asking you one last time. Was that your mama who called me and meant to act? So I go, no, I swear it was. I don't even know what you're talking about. Thank God. I, you Because know, I almost confessed. Ah, oh, bad move. Yeah, but I didn't. And then he lets go and he goes, now I know who done it. <laughs> Carlos. Oh, so and he yeah, pummeled the crap. the other guy. Oh, yeah. Up. Yeah, that guy Carlos. And I never saw him in school again. Oh. Never. He got his ass beat. He must have confessed. Even though he didn't do it. 
I didn't hear about a funeral, so I think he's oh. alive, but this guy Carlos. Yeah, why would you confess? The guy's already said he's going to kill yeah. you if you're the person. And he would have killed me. And why would you say yes? Obviously, you're not yeah. going to say yes. You don't know what to do. That's a bad scene, man. Yeah. I got beat up. So and mind you, this is going on in a shop class with the guy watching. The shop teacher was watching. <laughs> <laughs> was that, watching, that, saw the whole minute. thing, wait a saw minute. the whole the, thing. The whole class. Was he was watching? a big. He was a scared white man, and the I don't whole blame class him. Class was watching though. Well, I was in the back. No, a lot of the class doesn't pay attention. You gotta understand something. There's constant fighting going on in these classes. <laughs> I, there's no way for me to describe what Roosevelt Long Island is like. Oh, it's just no. constant warfare. There are guys in corner smoking pot. Life. I mean, I was in ninth grade. I never even heard of pot. No, no, I took a matter. No, I swear. This was a guy. There was a guy who came in. I don't know his name. And no. He looked a lot like Flavor Flav. He was kind of like a jokey kind of guy. Yeah. But he would, you could tell he could beat the crap out of anyone. Mm -hmm. You know. And the guy comes into the class and pulls his pants down because this guy was huge. I How never seen. I never hear about people dying at Roosevelt High School. Oh, people die. But they you don't read about it in the paper. It? You read, no, 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 read Newsday. You can go take the last year's worth of Newsday. Count up the dead people. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, there's a lot the going on there, Rob. There's a lot. It's, it's a, real bad. It's, That's so in fact, sad. It's so it's, common. It's so now. common. It's that like, it doesn't get reported. No, no, it doesn't even get on. It's a little box. Like on Newsday, it's not even on the regular page. It's like exactly. It's like a lot of little boxes. Yeah. Rolls about the man. I read shot. it every day. I read it every day because I'm on the lookout for it. <laughs> I love to read about. it. Like you to like to read about your old schoolmates. Yeah, I like to see. I like to see if I know anybody. I like to see if it's. Uh, Wine Danch. Wine Danch is another uh, really bad black neighborhood. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like to see who where more murders are committed and uh -huh. all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Believe me, Robin, the headline would be if nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you would see like, wow, today nothing happened nothing in Roosevelt. Nothing happened in oh, wow. Roosevelt. Yeah, but you know what it is? It's a news day. It's a local Long Island uh, yeah. occurrence. Yeah. And everyone just ignores it and hopes it goes away. I mean, why wouldn't you close that school down? Why wouldn't you do get Joe Green? Why wouldn't you do something? No, they should declare. Be, oh, they should. You mean Joe Clark? Joe Clark, They should yeah. get. They should Get mean Joe Green and Joe Clark to go in there <laughs> and take care of the whole damn town. Really? Just get a couple of baseball bats and clean up. We should declare it a foreign country like Haiti. And then invade. And invade and civilize it. It is out Have of control. There, it right is not a classes. civilized. It is not a civilized area. That is sad. Have you been uh, Have you been looking through your mail lately? Yeah, I got a letter from a woman from Roosevelt who told me not to make fun of it. Well, did you see the Why? other letter you got? No. The, um, they They wanted you to come and. Uh, Help them uh, reopen uh, the library. <laughs> Are you went, serious? Yeah, you didn't see Somebody that? And cut the ribbon? Yeah. Out. Let me tell you something. No one goes to that library. Well, it's great. no, they put a lot of money into it good, now. Good, good. Oh, it's come on. Howard, oh. Howard, you got to go. No, and number come two, on. no way. Oh, Let me tell you Howard. something, Robin. I made a vow when my parents finally took out back. ninth grade that I would never take go back. me. I want to see. You're <laughs> safe there, not me. <laughs> oh, I am? Oh, like, yeah. I didn't beat up black people at Roosevelt. All they're going to they do is pull now? your pants down and have some sex with you. Right, that's that's exactly what I want to have happen. You'll probably love it. Yes, yeah, sure. Come on, take me back. And why did they have to close the library? down in the first place. Needed some refurbishment. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have any books. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and all the stores uh, are burned down. Either the owners burn them down because they can't make a go of it. Is, does Hempstead Avenue run through there? No. No, it's called Nassau Road. What is that? What does Hempstead Avenue run through? Hempstead. Hempstead used Is to that bad too? Oh, yeah. Oh. Because <laughs> I but Hempstead, a lot of boarded up stuff there. But Hempstead's a party. I call Hempstead Hempstead Africa. Hempstead Africa is a party next to Roosevelt. Really? Hempstead is like a nice place compared Hems to Roosevelt. Hempstead still has businesses. Yeah. yeah. That, but they'll be gone But soon. it still looks kind of... Oh, yeah, but no, but Howard's right because on Nassau Road, there's like all boarded up movie theaters and there used to be an A&P. There was this A&P and every week it burned down. Someone would buy it and not make a go of it and burn down. So now there's like no supermarket. Uh -huh. So I don't know where the black people shop. They must have to go into Uniondale or something. <laughs> Right, well, where right do black on, people shop? Right on Nassau Road, right where, right on the Union Del Roosevelt border, they just built this whole new complex. Oh, really? You know, it's brand new, but you could tell. It's, it's already you know, getting a little wear and tear. Now, wait, you, they used to have a place called the Roosevelt Diner, which was really cool. I used to go there and, and get french fries in a bag and pour ketchup. And it was just like a really cool place to hang out. And then that, <laughs> then that like, went too. all the windows started getting blown out. and It was like being in, it was like being in um, Beirut. <laughs> and my parents... Like living there. They didn't know? They didn't, they they didn't know. know. Everything's but, fine. Yeah. My father, I paid $14,000 for this house. It's almost paid off. I got to move to somewhere like Rockville Center, pay $50,000 for a house. What are you crazy? Shut up, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so it's pretty wild, but there's this place, you know, it, it, there's Nassau Road. That's where the big town is. But yeah. And then I told you the movie theater. I used to go to the movies every <laughs> Saturday at the Roosevelt Movie Theater. Right. So one day I'm there, 
And I thought a milk dud flew by my head. It was a bullet. The, the kids were shooting bullets Stop it. How old through were the you screen. Then? I was about seventh grade. They were ahead of their time. Yeah. So they <laughs> shot up the screen. And what it is, screens are really expensive. You, know, you don't realize what a movie theater screen is. That's their biggest expense. It's evidently, you know, it's got to be hung the right so way. And it's a whole so, thing. Huh? Yeah. It's, it's, what is it? Silver flakes? Mm -hmm. I think it's silver flakes. Yeah. So they finally said to everyone, you know, they made an announcement. Look, we're going to have to close down the movie theater if the kids keep shooting the, the screen. <laughs> and they said, we'll close it down. And, uh, well, they did. Yeah. They replaced the screen about 100 times and they gave up. Does the screen have, like, holes in it and stuff? Yeah. Oh, you'd be sitting there watching. You could miss whole thing, and a guy's, whole scene. Yeah, a guy's head would be blown off. <laughs> <laughs> it was just unbelievable. <laughs> but at least they were shooting the screen and not the people. Back then, everyone was a little more... Yeah, they Mellow. were pointing that away instead of yeah. this away. A lot of times it was BB <laughs> guns and stuff, but who cared? I mean, it was guns. You know, when I was in college... And the kids loved the movies. They, they, they loved the movies. Blacks love movies. Then why would they shoot up the screen? They get excited. They, they start to... I don't know. They get... They get so... You, you would have to see what was going on in there. They used to throw chocolate at the screen where I'm from. Yeah, a lot of the kids couldn't sit through, this, through, through the movie. They would get crazy and have to fire off some guns. This is in seventh grade, and, and I was in seventh grade, you know, a hundred years ago. <laughs> you know, the truth of it is, I think I remember throwing candy at the screen, and I can't remember why. And I guess shooting at the screen is just like the next logical. Well, I don't the know. That's a big leap. <laughs> wow. Big retard. Jackie throwing chocolate at the screen. Jackie throwing chocolate at the screen. No, no, jujubes. Oh. Yeah. Jackie, you might be black. <laughs> oh, that's a black thing. It's not no. a stupid thing. It's no. a black thing. Dig that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it was pretty wild being the one white kid in that. Actually, there were you about four. Were the one white there were four, Stop four white kids. Yourself out to be no, more you're right. A hero than you are. There were four white kids. I confess. And the shop teacher. It was me and a guy named Mark. Yeah. And uh, Dennis Acavelli. And how long were you there, really, when and it one was down Polak. to that many uh, <laughs> whites? How many years were you there when it was only... So down to four whites, four one year. Whites. That was That's the year that see? I had to get out. See? Oh, excuse me. The previous two years, I was one of 20. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't much better. I told you about the time I, I, they offered... All the blacks went crazy and wanted black studies. Yeah. So I signed up for it, <laughs> thinking, like, maybe they'll take it easy on me if I'm racially right. sensitive. Yes. And we, we get in there, it was all five white kids <laughs> had signed up for the class, and there wasn't one black guy taking these black all had studies. The same strategy. Yeah, they all had the same strategy. It was a bunch of and they and they canceled black studies. Maybe the end of it. Maybe I'll learn their habits. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it would be kind of cool, you know, like maybe everyone would mellow out if they saw that I was racially sensitive, which I was anyway because I was living there. I give no, me you five. weren't racially I didn't have to be sensitive. living there. Your oh, parents was. stuck you there. Uh, Hello, <laughs> bud. <laughs> you know, Mr. Homely. Racially Sensitive. I didn't talk like that, yo, but I've talked like a black guy. <laughs> I was, I, I don't, hey, man, come on, Ivan, don't do that to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I talked for three years. <laughs> That's why they beat you. They hate that more than anything. No, they don't. <laughs> They Everybody out. talks. They they talk like that, and they're not from the south. <laughs> so you were the original wigger. Yep. Hey man, it's the it no, I was such wasn't. a wigger. He didn't, he didn't Wrong. Dress the way they did. I was such a wigger. Would let him. I was such a wigger <laughs> that I mean I hated that. You know I can't even do it no more. Man, come on, man. I'm a, I didn't tell. I didn't tell my dad about you. If and he had like, ever done it, he'd be able to do it. I swear. I you, come on. Well, in fact, when you first met me, you remember how good a black impression I used to do? <laughs> it's like wearing off now. Oh, <laughs> I was the wigger. And I, did, did you, well, you went to Union Dale, didn't you? Start talking black. Well, you do. Uh, I had it just out of self-defense because everyone you're around talking, black guys. You start talking because you feel like you know. Like I, I, I like went, it. I was in a class and the teacher couldn't calm the kids down, so she said, "We're gonna have music." It's like going to France. You speak French, right? <laughs> she said, you, "You're gonna you're gonna have music appreciation day because none of the kids could calm down in class. Everyone bring in their favorite record." So stupid ass me. Everyone, all the kids had brought in like um, Motown, you know, Diana Ross, or and Otis Temptations, Redding, Otis and Redding, Wilson Pickett, yeah, Marvin Gaye, yeah. Uh, I get in there. I just discovered Sergeant Pepper's that summer. <laughs> and I get up and go. Right, obviously, it can't. I'm like, well, man, I found this really hell good record. You know, and it was totally like this. And I said, it was a really good record. And it has Sergeant Pepper, Lonely Heart Club Band. And I put, you had to stand up in front of the class and put it. <laughs> put the needle on? Yeah, I meanwhile, your hand is shaking. 
You put your hand on the you know on the record. <laughs> you can't even cue up the damn record. And then I start playing, you know, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart. I thought they were gonna kill me. Everyone started booing. <laughs> and then I learned that I bring in like Motown, <laughs> which I did. Hey man, I really did because I felt self-conscious bringing in a Motown record. I really wasn't into Motown. I was into the Beatles, and it might seem patronizing. Yeah, right. So like, I was Why sensitive to that. Why could you stand up there and stand up for what you believe? Oh. This was the music you liked. <laughs> <laughs> man, I discovered the Beatles, and you had to talk like this. You know, oh, stop no, that's it. how you talk, man. That's how you talk like this. They were beating you anyway. You might as well talk yeah, like. Yeah, but you person. try to fit in. Like even in class, when the teacher would call on you, it was cool to be like really stupid oh. because if you acted like you knew the answer, all the kids would goof on you. So I'd be like, I mean, I don't know who that is. That's a, you gotta talk like that. You have to, and you have to talk stupid. What? Yeah, say what, man? <laughs> no one said say what back then, though. That wasn't the expression. Oh, oh that was... No. Before. That was Jackie's expression. Yeah. Yeah. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> but it was weird. It was weird. And I remember, like, when I'd see white kids, I'd talk white, and then I would talk black when I was in school. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man, how you doing? How you doing, man? Hey, Irvin, don't, come on, man. Come on, man. I gotta eat my lunch, too. How come we can't find this Irvin? You know we've looked for him a number of times. I know. I don't know his last name. You are lying, I think. No. I Why would I lie to you? How could you make that up? I, I, because you read it in a book, just like that Vietnam stuff. There's a lot of guys. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, no, no, no. This is my personal Vietnam. There's another guy who beat me up. But I don't know if I want to say his full name. His well, name is Ronald. But uh, Have I said his full name? No, I think you're talking about Zany. <laughs> no, no, Zany M has never beat me up. Oh, no. He he was just wild. There was a guy who used to beat me up named Ronald Nipper. I guess it's okay to say Zany. Yeah, why not? Yeah, he used what to are beat you me doing? Up. If he beat you up, he beat you up. I just up. don't really want to run into him again. <laughs> he used to beat me up a lot. We can't find these did, people. Did I ever tell He's you that? He's the guy who used to steal my salad. Like, if I if I got by him by lunch money, he would just, he'd come over and just take his hand. <laughs> but wouldn't you like to ask them what the hell they were beating on you for? I know why they were beating on me. They just, but I mean, from the, just to hear them say it, you know, yeah. what oh, yeah. was it? Well, why did you pick them? on me? Well, why don't you go undercover and find these guys? <laughs> did I ever tell you that I got beat up in ninth grade so bad that I had to get stitches and I got beat up in front of the entire school? Oh. Look, it the was teachers at, too? Yeah, it was at an assembly. Oh, geez. I got beat up at an assembly. <laughs> so the whole school was assembled. Well, and did the teachers stop it? Yeah, I bled all over. I, I almost got my nose broken. I ended up getting five stitches over my eye, but I bled all Black over. Black guys? No, one black guy. Right. I ended up oh. bleeding. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I ended up, you know what he did? I ended up bleeding. Black guys can fight, man. Oh, can they fight? I ended up God bless him. One black guy was like a gang on gang. It is, though. You know what? You know what I, listen, I fought a lot of black guys. And when I say I fought, I hardly Howard, put up a fight. it's not like you're a great boxer right. or anything, though. These no, guys were like professional boxers. They can move so fast. I used to see guys coming at me like this. I swear to God, they'd, get, they'd come up and they were so wiry and everything. They'd just go, pow, pow, pow. Just all of a sudden, it'd be like, whoa, I just took three hits to the head. He's right there. Like that. They were all yeah. Ray Leonard. They and, they, really and, you know, and they didn't, they, they, they fought each other and then they'd get a hold of you and fight you. <laughs> I tell you Robin, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I was, you know those, uh, those you nasty like, I don't know white, I mean black people. You know, we have to teach you. <laughs> you know those lunchroom tables that come out of the wall? <laughs> yes. So wait, you know, what happened when you got beat up? Okay, you know those lunchroom tables that come out of the wall? Yeah. I was sitting at one of those and the guy that beat me up had been in the school for a week. He, he came from the city or from Queens or somewhere. Yeah. He was new to the school. So we were watching this movie in assembly, and I'm tapping my pen, and he said, hey, you know, hey, stop tapping your pen. Hey, man, stop tapping your pen, man. And I just, I said, you know, I ignored him, and then he called me a name, and I called him a name, and he called me a name. And oh, then, you you fought back. No, no. You, said, then, you but, said names back. <laughs> You're a jacket. So, you never say anything so then, back. So that was like it, right? <laughs> so then I just put my head down. So we're, watching, we're watching the movie, so I put my head down. Kick your way. And he, he, you know, he, he came up from behind. I was in those one of those things you couldn't get out of. Yeah. So he started punching me from behind, and then he took my head. Ooh. I swear to God, I'm making this up. He took my head, and he started smashing it against one of those lunchroom tables. Oh, man. So I ended up getting stitches in the eye, but my nose... let me ask you something. Like, and what happens to the kid who does this? Nothing, right? We both got suspended for two days. Yeah, you I got suspended. Yeah, for you. You Running know why? Because they were afraid to suspend the I black never, guy without suspending the white guy. I never, threw, I never threw a punch because... I just never got out of the chair. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but, they suspended you. But my team, well, they actually, what they did is. You know, nowadays, parents are smart. They just sue the damn family. They sue the school. They oh, sue yeah. everybody. I'll tell you what happened. The I could have been a millionaire. The principal of the school <laughs> came over to my house. For the amount of beatings I took, I could have sued Where Roosevelt. Where were going to get the money? Roosevelt's You'd public have been owed the money. Well, I could have been owed money, at least. <laughs> I would have theoretically on paper been a millionaire. <laughs> the principal of the school came over to my house and said, you're not suspended. But we'd like it if you stayed home for two or three days because we don't want a race riot. That's right. what he said. It was to make it look like, good. Because it was like the school was like 50-50. They didn't want to turn into a whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, I God forbid. God forbid common sense should rule. Yeah. The music teacher, you know, yeah. the, the music teacher is the one who ended up getting over there. Mm -hmm. And I, my nose was like bleeding like crazy. Uh. I thought it was broken. 
and I bled all over this guy's suit. I mean, it was, they, and people said, like, I don't remember. Were you, I was, like, I was punch di- drunk I was dizzy? dizzy, but they said there was blood. All You know, oh. the janitor yelled at me when I came back. See, I would have taken that guy. I would have taken that guy. If it was, you know, if I was the governor, I'd have him executed <laughs> because he is he is worthless. But he was one of those guys that was like he was so much so bigger than ninth had to graders. Go to school with him every day. Well, my eye oh yeah, cl- that's my- why schools suck. Ugh. My eye closed uh-huh. and changed colors like in Rocky. It was like purple one day and then yellow. It yeah. literally closed, uh-huh. and I had to go back to school with one eye. And I'll tell you something. That's why school. That's why I said to my mother, "How the hell can you be doing this to me? Are you out of your friggin' bird?" Why are you putting me well, through hell? What did your parents do when you came home? Well, his parents well, had no money. No, no. We ended up, my mother was freaking out because she had to come to get me at the school so she could bring me at the hospital because the school doesn't want to start stitching you up or anything. They don't want to be responsible. Right. So they said, come and get your kid really quick and take him to, to the hospital. hospital. So I went to the hospital and I got stitches. And then myself and my father and the other guy and his father had a meeting with the principal. And the other guy's father was very, like, belligerent and yeah. very, you know. Well, you blame my son. He was angry at me because, yeah. of course. Hey, man, he started so it was you just, can't argue with that logic. I, I, what is it, stuttering, John? What are you waiting for? Oh, uh, we got a, a black woman on the phone who's uh, upset with you promoting racism. Uh, I'm promoting racism. Uh, well, hey, I live this. She got to uh-huh. that. Point. Darling, how did you get to that point that I'm promoting racism? Hello? Yeah. Howard, listen. I listen to you. I'm your biggest fan, but no, you're not. You, no, you really need to stop. You really. Oh, need to get please. Now, first of all, wait. What was that statement that? Somebody talks black and talks white. Who's and then you're doing? You your, don't know like, what that anus. means. No, You've never heard that before. Anus and Andy impression. Hey, I, that's how I talked in Roosevelt. No, no, no. I have a brother who just graduated Cornell Law. He does not talk. Yeah, black, he doesn't. Okay? But go to Roosevelt. Everyone talks that way. No, well, no. Th- see, that's an economic and a cultural thing. Oh, just I'll because you that. and Boy Gary were raised in poor neighborhoods, and that's truly the root of your problem does not mean there are blacks out there who don't Darling, talk, I am sure there black. are, but I didn't grow up with them. Well, that is your, it's an economic... When I went to, cultural. when I lived in Roosevelt, I had to talk that way. No, that's the way no, everyone no, he talked. didn't have to talk that way. That's the way he chose to talk. That's right. the way you chose to talk because that's the way you had to survive. But believe me, I'm sure that there were blacks who held their head high and who could afford to get out of that neighborhood, even though you're yeah, so could. tell me something I don't know. Oh, you're so silly. But you... Oh, I'm not going to listen to that. <laughs> she just interrupted a great conversation <laughs> with a dumb comment. So, anyway, the end of the story was I, I stayed home from school for three days. It's like Oprah. You see Oprah on her TV show? She gets an all-black audience there right away. She's like, honey, child. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> she goes, look at Dionne Warwick. Girlfriend. All of a sudden, when she's on that... Stupid show, that psychic show. She should she should be in jail for that show. That's got to be illegal. <laughs> hey, she's not putting a gun to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they should lock her up. <laughs> you know, man, you're taking advantage of dopes. Honey, I just got a prediction. I, my next album gonna go go. Oh, how was the reading? <laughs> <laughs> but every time I see that Psychic Friends Network, I draw bars on my set. <laughs> Pretend what it'd be like to see Dion Warwick behind behind bars. <laughs> That the FCC don't look into. Well, you know, she's moving to Brazil, I hear. Good. But With I, all the money, I guess. Well, yeah. That's why they don't have extradition laws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it's not illegal to get into psychic readings. <laughs> Three yeah. ninety nine a minute. We ought to take a break and do the news. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so much for shop teachers. Do you want to um, talk to your, your, the guy that you went to high school with, that guy Dennis? And uh, he remembers Irvin and remembers his last name and remembers how big he was and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. verification. Well, actually, it's just funny because Irvin had a very funny last name. Yeah, but I don't know if you want to announce his name on the air. Why not? Because he don't want to. All right. It's just a funny name. Hey, Dennis, don't announce Irvin's name, but... Who is Dennis? Dennis Acavelli was the one white guy I told you that we oh, left. Okay. He, he graduated. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, he, his parents were See? real poor. He, you left him there. <laughs> Dennis is a nice guy. I don't know why we didn't hang out more like and like try to... Yeah, I don't know. Dennis was very bright in school, very intelligent. So he couldn't hang around with I don't him. know, but he never hung around. Even though we were one of the few white people left, it was very funny what happened to the white but people. But I thought you were like the valedictorian of this school. But oh. Dennis would have been. No, no. Well, you know, it wasn't safe to walk from my house to Howard's house. It wasn't? No. <laughs> no, it really wasn't because Dennis lived on the other side of town. You two were in pockets. <laughs> Roosevelt was only one square mile where I grew up, but if you walked, like, he would have to walk seven or eight blocks. Not, no more. How maybe did 15 this blocks. Because it was a white neighborhood. It was and a white neighborhood. And like overnight, these literally. Woodlums moved in? Yeah. Well, what happened was uh, 
a couple of black families moved in. Mm -hmm. And what it is, the realtors would decide what neighborhoods would get black families. Yeah, they target. Yeah, so, they, so a couple of black people moved in, and everyone panicked. Everyone said, well, wait a second. If black people move next door to me, I better sell my house quick. So everyone started selling the blacks. Uh -huh. And overnight, I mean, literally, it was like you could knock on someone's door, and they would move out in the middle of the night. You're telling me they, they, these people were homeowners? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't oh, oh, you mean the people houses? who moved in? No, 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 no. Okay. Let me tell you what happened. They got assistance, right. like. They got assistance, right. and five families would move into one house. Oh. It would be welfare. Because everyone would go, your so mama's you on were, welfare. You and they go, yeah. You were living in the projects. <laughs> yeah, we, this was worse than projects. Because there were five was, families. Level projects. Dennis, I don't know if you ever saw this, but one time I was, I, like, there was a bunch of kids playing baseball. There was nine guys on each side, you know, yeah. on each team. Someone yells out, dinner. Every kid, 18 kids piled into one house. <laughs> And these the are little team houses. Went to a house. Yeah. Hey, hey Howard, I um, I played football with Ronald Nipper. Did you? Yeah, yeah. He was our halfback for Roosevelt. He so you were a pretty big guy then. Well, well I don't know, it wasn't that big. But no, Dennis football. isn't that big. Yeah. But, but Dennis, did you get beat up all the time? Um, I didn't get beat up that much. No, no, uh -huh. no. I don't, although I did like you know when Howard was talking about guys being fast. Yeah. My mother made me go to school the day after Martin Luther King was shot. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I was walking down the hall and all of a sudden just some guy just comes by and just like hits me in the eye and I didn't even know it. It happened so fast. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We were the bad whites for living in Roosevelt. I used to. I told the guys. I used to pray. There's a there was an all white town next to Roosevelt called Merrick. Right. Lily White. I said, mm -hmm. boy, you know, black people are always screaming, why don't white men live with the black man? Why is the white man afraid of black skin? I said, I am a one, me and Dennis, the only two guys living with black people, they're beating the crap out of us. Why can't they all get together, go over to America and beat up all the whiteies <laughs> over there who moved away from them? I used to fantasize. I never understood it. But uh, listen, these were just dopey that kids. Have, that would have shown them that they were wrong to move. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, why would you beat up the one white guy who's willing to live with you? Yeah, my mom. Why didn't you get beat up as much as Howard? That's what I gotta know. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I played football and. Uh, so you uh, know how to handle yourself. Yeah. There was something about Howard. No, people do like to be. Even white people like to be. You had to. You either had to be crazy or no crazy people. Like, right. You know? And I think some people. I knew some crazy people. So like people stay away from you. If you mm. if they, yeah. Dennis, though, you gotta see Dennis. Dennis is one of those guys. Doesn't look like you should mess around with him. It's not that he's tough looking. Well, or anything. that's what I'm saying, Howard. You sort of had this indication yeah. that you were easy pickings. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't know either. But I had guys taking full giant metal baskets and there throwing them at my no shoulders fear and head. That you were going to hurt them back. Yeah. Hey, Howard, I also remember shop class. That was wild. Do you remember shop teacher's uh, name? What was his name? Mr. Anthony. Yeah, Mr. Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the guy who stood by while I got my ass kicked. Where's Mr. Anthony? We should call him keys, up for that. The keys to the bathroom on this big wooden block. And he'd throw it at you. Yeah, he used to throw it. Like, you would be throw it at your head. head. Oh, well, yeah. he was and vicious too. Right yeah. at your head. And, like, and people would get hit. No one would report them to their, like, you know, to her mothers. And yeah, it was different. You know what? Because that wasn't so bad getting hit by your shop teacher when you're getting beat up by black guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he also used to walk around, you know, with that T-square? Yep. He used to walk around with the T-square, and if, and if, like, he'd come up from behind you, and if you would smack you, and he'd whack you with it. Like. Yeah. So he, he did control the class. Oh, he well, not really. Uh, he was just doing that because he was sadistic, I think. Yeah. Uh. Well, he should work at the vault. <laughs> <laughs> you have a place for him. Your mom's made you go to school, too, after uh, Martin Luther King was shot. My mother, yeah. too. My yeah. I said to my mother, well, maybe well, I ought to stay home. you didn't shoot him. <laughs> oh, man. Bob, my mother's black friends were calling her saying, Ray, leave Howard home today. Let it rest for a couple of days. My mother goes, I'm not afraid. Oh, yeah. I go, oh, she's not afraid. Yeah. Isn't that brave <laughs> of her? She's not, going. Going. she's not going to school. She's going to sit in the house. <laughs> my mom is sending me every, the day after Martin Luther King. Shot, every black guy is ready to kill any white thing he sees. Yeah, the, the school was in an uproar. It was like crazy. I don't know about you, man, but I took my ass right out of school at 3 o'clock and ran. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. But did my you get hit that day? You said you got beat up. I, uh, did I get beat up that day? I don't think I got beat up that day. It might have been oh. a day later. Yeah. Dennis took the beating that day in the eye. <laughs> It wasn't safe. That was, for the next, like, two weeks, it really wasn't safe. To wasn't there a math teacher, too, that got stabbed? Yeah. Do you remember well, I, that? The math teacher who got stabbed in the parking lot? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Great community. What do you do now, Dennis? Um, I'm a computer consultant. He's a real smart guy. See, you could get a good education there. Me and him, me and him uh, he's, he was one of those guys who was always in the smartest class, even when it was all white, because uh -huh. we grew up together. We, uh -huh. we were uh, at the school when it was all white. Yeah. 
And I remember he was in Mrs. Lazar's sixth grade class, which was considered the genius class, and yeah. they accidentally put me in it. I don't know. Remember I got in your class? Yeah. Remember I didn't know anything? <laughs> and I just sit there and cheat off you? Oh, dear. And one time, I used to sit behind Dennis Acavelli. And one time I made a joke about Dunkin' Donuts and I started schnotting through yeah. my nose. Do you remember this, Dennis? Sure. And the schnot was running out of my nose so bad that Mrs. Lazar came over and stood me up in front of the class with the schnot dripping out of my nose. He goes, Mr. Stern is in need of a tissue. He obviously finds something funny. Do you remember this, Dennis? Yeah. yeah he's got to because he was, it, it was a highlight of my life. <laughs> Big swatch of schnot just dripping out oh, of my nose. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was funny. Had a wipe on Dennis's shirt. <laughs> No, but the teacher, this was such a smart class. What happened was, in fifth grade, I really <laughs> got into reading. smart class you did this in, huh? In fifth grade, I really got into reading. Mm -hmm. I, I had really discovered the joy of reading. And when I discovered the joy of something, I get into it for like 10 minutes. Yeah. And then I'm on to the next thing. It's just like your new thing. So I read so much. Yes. That they tested. You know, it was just a, it just coincided with the time they tested you. They tested you once a year. And I, my reading score shot through the roof. Like a comprehension, all that stuff. So I said, this kid is so bright. Even though he doesn't do well in school, we're putting him in Mrs. Lazar's class. Uh -huh. and, and that Mrs. was a big accomplishment to be in. Yeah, I mean, and, and people were like angry that I was in Mrs. Lazar's class because I didn't belong in there. I knew I didn't belong in there. And you were all on the honor system. She'd even put the desk together in fours. So there was no monitoring. And I cheated my ass off. <laughs> I cheated off Dennis Acavelli every day. He got me through uh, sixth grade. I would have flunked out. You know, when I, when I was in the, over, over in high school, like in, in homeroom, no one would ever want to like sit near me. Like everybody was running around homeroom and stuff. Yeah. And then. Because you were then, white, like, right? You know, when they gave like midterms and finals and stuff, everybody had to sit in their homeroom seat. Everybody would try and sit near me so they could cheat off me. Uh, right. Then you were popular. And you better let those guys cheat off you. Yeah, you had to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you had to. Hey, Howard, did you mention your shop teacher's name on the air? Yeah. Because, um. This guy called said, you know, he went to Roosevelt around the same time that you did. He didn't know you or anything, but he swears on a stack of Bibles that he sees a shop teacher every morning and that the guy's a Jehovah Witness now. He sees him at a train station handing out pamphlets. Wow, no I kidding. Surprised. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That was, a, that was some place. Yeah. You don't live in Roosevelt anymore, I take it. No, no, not anymore, no. No, I live in Port Washington now. Oh, that's a nice community. <laughs> Nice and, nice where and calm. You, Straight to parents? the North Shore. Are your parents out of Roosevelt? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked to, uh, a couple years ago. My uh, my mother's in uh, Bethpage now. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. When nice did community. you finally get out? Oh, I don't know. I moved out. I was living home. I moved out about when I was 25 years old. But so they were still in Roosevelt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. still in Roosevelt. Yeah. Dennis, Dennis was, and he lived in a giant white house. Uh-huh. Right, Dennis? Yeah. Bigger yeah. than anyone's house. Yeah. We sold that. You know what it is now? It's like a halfway house for uh, alcoholics and stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Like, yeah, there's a big white house, so, you know. It's an institution. It's, like it's an institution. Living in it. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't remain friends, though, That when we were under the Black Siege. I don't know why we didn't band together, but I guess it was every man for himself. It yeah. was divide and conquer. Yeah, I don't know what happened. We, like, like everybody just kind of, like, split apart. Like, yeah, I always liked you. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was fun, yeah. Yeah. I heard that we were going to have a reunion or something. Maybe you are. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go back. A reunion of what? I'll tell you something, Dennis. I refuse. My wife wants to see where I grew up. She yeah. thinks it's like a thing. And I, I take her and I drive her. I drive her to Rockville Center. And I go, oh, that's where I grew up. She goes, it's not so bad here. Why are you complaining? I go, I know it's not so bad. She still thinks she's seen Roosevelt. I just drive her around different neighborhoods. Do you really think that you would have, like, pains or yes. something? Yes. I know. I would, I, would, I would go into a flashback. It's like if you brought a guy back from Vietnam who had been sprayed with Agent Orange. But you know what, Howard? Robin's right. The time really has come. Yeah. And you should do this even for the E! Show. We should yes. take Robin to Roosevelt. No. I really want to see. I'm not going. Can I, I want, take her? I, I, I will not go. I would love to see the inside of these schools. I would vomit. Oh, Howard, I would vomit. On. I hated it there. You, you know you got to get I would have this. the shakes. This is not good that you still have this. Yo, and it's time to go back. Dennis, forward. you ever go back there? Huh? You ever go back? No. Yeah. I, I went back. I passed by one time. I passed through the town. Like, real quick. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go back there. You got to understand something. This is like going to... This is like, okay. If, if I you can were, go home, you can go back to this Remember school. on Tarzan? <laughs> wait a second. You remember on Tarzan? <laughs> when Tarzan would encounter a tribe that just mm -hmm. hated any outsiders? Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And they just attacked. They right. came running through the jungle and right. attacked even them. Even Tarzan would have trouble with yeah, Even people. Tarzan would have to. Like, he'd be screaming for animals and animals wouldn't come. <laughs> he'd be like, oh, oh, oh. And the elephants would turn and go the other way. <laughs> 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 
and there's no animals, nothing. That's what this is like. The lions didn't come. You don't know what's going to happen to you. It's just a <laughs> wild party. And you know, every time I'm on the Southern State Parkway with my wife, I, I threaten to take her through Rosemont. Yo, yeah, me too. I go by the exit and I speed up past the exit. Is there I go, an exit that says Roosevelt? Yes, it's exit 20 on the Southern State Parkway. Yeah. And I go by it exit and I go. Exit 21. Yeah, exit 21. And I say to my, I say to my, um, my wife sometimes, I go, oh God, if we even broke down. She goes, broke down in front of the exit you'd be nervous i go yeah i mean maybe i don't know what could happen and, you know it's funny because to get to uniondale it's the same exit but you go left and whenever you tell anyone to come visit you so whatever make you do sure. don't make a right yeah You're because not you might not you might not come back you'll never see your friends again <laughs> it's really that bad and that was 20 years ago it was bad <laughs> imagine so what it's now, like now forget about it i guess years, I yeah. know what it was, what anybody who grew up there would not go back like, don't you i would sooner curious? run around naked in harlem aren't you curious though howard <laughs> no no curiosity whatsoever oh, come don't want to see it don't want to see it you don't want to see the house the i grew library. up in you think your house is still there Oh, I know it is because I have the e-crew go down there and shoot it so I can see what it looks like. Well, what's going Check on? You, do you know who's in there? No, don't want to know. <laughs> I know it's painted yellow, a really strange color. Checks cashed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you something. It makes being a lost tourist in Florida a joyride. <laughs> Honestly, God, I'd rather put up with that. Yeah. It's bad, man. Well, it, it, Dennis knows. He went through the war. <sighs> We're like, you know what? We ought to get together and drink like two Vietnam vets. And tell stories. Yeah, like, and like, you know, because no one else understands us. Lay out your medals. Like black berets and stuff. Yeah, just black sit there. Black berets, we survived. You can go down to like a VW hall. <laughs> <laughs> the big one. Yeah, I tell you, man, remember that guy used to kick our ass? And, so and tell Irvin Robin that guy, Irvin. Big, huh? Irvin was really big, wasn't he? Irvin was a big guy. And there wasn't he like a man? It was like men Did he beating have, a like, boy. like shave and stuff? Yeah, oh yeah. There was like a lot of guys in school like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were older than us. Yeah. They, at least they looked older. I mean, they could have been the same age, but they looked like they were 25 years old. My friend, these guys were not our age. <laughs> <laughs> these were guys who came from Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, and had not gone to school for 12 years, and they just threw them in a school. You never have to prove how old you are in school. No. <laughs> no, it was not a fair fight. All right, Dennis, I'm getting the shakes just talking to you. Howard, could, okay, you, could you put Dennis on hold? I want to talk yeah, okay. to him. Okay, hold on, Dennis. Okay, take, take it easy. All right, man. Another survivor. Well, see, nothing bad happened. You, you survived. It's like Auschwitz survivors getting together. Why us? Why were we the two that survived? They're still shaking. What about the others? I've got six numbers on my arm. Yeah, right. I should have tattoos. <laughs> Something to show that you were there. Yeah. I'm very embarrassed, Robert. I'm going to show you my tattoo. <laughs> Keep it covered at all times. Yeah. Uh, I think a concentration camp was a party compared to oh, Roosevelt. Now you're getting really all crazy. Right. There all was right. no gas Sorry. chamber at the end of the hall. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's take a break and do the news. This all is right. ridiculous. Enough of your silliness. Yeah. I'm I didn't afraid know, of Roosevelt. I didn't know Dennis Hackavelli would call it. <laughs> you really ought to go back. <laughs> just to see, uh, you know, it's just you like go and check it out. off a horse, Howard. Yeah. Go you got to get back on. As I say to my wife, there is no reason to go back. <laughs> In fact, I, when my father pulled the car away from Roosevelt that day, I never looked that back. That was it. You've never stepped foot in there again. I wouldn't allow Bye. my father to put his foot on the brakes. Because I thought it was going to be like a movie. Just as you're getting out, somebody... Somebody, somebody drag you back in? Yeah. And we got out, and I just sat there, and I said, ooh, there's a new Italian restaurant in Rockville Center where we're moving. And I was just so excited. So excited. Uh, I got to go check. I've never seen Roosevelt. I really got to go check this out. To me, it's vanished. Like that city in the Superman episode that completely vanished. Right, the, they put it in a bottle. Yeah. Fortress of Solitude, it now sits. <laughs> Whole city gone. <laughs> Let's just take a break and do the news right All after right. the words.